We all make mistakes. And in this video, I'm going to share a couple of my mistakes that I made on a job about five years ago. I'm going to talk about what went wrong, how it could have been prevented, and what I do differently now to stop it happening again. At the time of recording the video, I actually thought I was pretty shit hot and there wasn't really much for me to learn. I didn't quite realise how much there was still to learn. Right, so here we are on the, the job. I've obviously not filmed the, the um, stripping of the tree. I've just kind of um, started with the top. This is the top I'm about to send. You can't quite see them at the minute, but directly below this, we've got power lines and uh, utility cables coming into the house. Uh, one little thing I do here, so I, I put the half hitch in, but then I go around the same way with uh, the carabiner. So in, in, in this nowadays, five years on, what probably what I would do here is go around the opposite way. So if I've swung it round to the to the right to put the half hitch in, I'll probably swing it round to the left to, to clip the carabiner on, which will probably cinch it cinch it a bit better. Just put a little bit too much friction on that. It's not. It's not run freely. It's not the end of the world because you, you know I'm not climbing the tree, so it would have been a bit more uncomfortable if I was been up there. Obviously, uh, you know, in your arborist career, you're probably going to have a few uh, buckaroo rides up there. But in this case, it wasn't too bad because I was in the bucket truck. Again, moving on to the next piece. Now onto the timber. I say it's difficult for the groundsman sometimes to judge if, 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 if you stripped a tree like this, you've not dealt with any weight like the top uh, yet. So it's difficult to get the, the friction exactly right. Um, but the more experienced you are, the more better you'll get it. So this is all negative rigging because you're rigging down onto the, the uh, rigging block. And you can see we've moved that uh, truck there. It's like the timber truck. Now, <clears throat> one of my kind of policies now when we're working is if it can be moved move it because if it's in the way it can get damaged um, and if it's not in the way it can't so it's literally as simple as that so if anything was to have gone wrong in this situation which you may well do uh, you'll see shortly then if that truck's in the way well it's just going to get damaged obviously we can't move the cables but we can move that truck, so in hindsight, you know, I know it's convenient because I'll drop a piece, he'll load it, I'll drop a piece, he'll load it. I think we're probably just trying to be a bit too too quick here. We probably should have just moved it out of the way. A better way to clip that carabiner would be f by flipping it round as well. So it's, it's, it's pulling on the opposite side of the gate. Yeah, so Joel's doing a decent job here of like uh, leaving them suspended. It'll slowing them down. That's the idea of rigging that you're gradually slowing them down. He's leaving it suspended. Jeff there with the grab is picking it up and chucking it in the van. So looking back on that now, um, that's all fine, but picking up the bit of timber with a grab while the rope's still on it, now we're basically putting a mechanical grab of, of steel pinching onto the rope. There's a good chance that that could have weakened that rope in some way, like, and I've just not seen it. Um, so again, just flipping that carabiner just 180 degrees, so the gate's on the top and it's pulling it into the, the, the other corner of the uh, carabiner would be better. A bit of a neighborly, I uh, don't know if that's a complaint going on there, but.
Yeah, so again, Joel's doing a decent job. You can see why we chose to do this, but realistically speaking, it's potentially damaging. If you look at the rope there, you could see a little nick in it, actually. And that could, that could be potentially from the, um, the grab, grabbing it. I didn't notice that before. As you're working down the stem, two things happen, especially on the straight trees like this. So the first thing is the timber gets bigger and heavier, obviously. Uh, the second thing is, which is probably more critical, you run out of space. Like obviously here in Vancouver, the trees are straight and tall. And uh, when you start getting down to the, the bigger timber, you run out of space to slow it down. So obviously the principle of rigging is, yeah, so that's a better way to clip the carabiner on, like that look, so it's away from the gate. The principle is you slow things down gradually with rigging and bring it to a complete stop. When, as you get lower down to the tree, you've got the timber getting heavier and you've got the, uh, the less distance to go. So Joel's just questioning where my angle is there. Is it away from the, the cables? He's obviously con concerned about it hitting. Yeah, so I can see that Joel's put more, more friction in. Obviously the piece is getting bigger. So he's put more friction in, it's falling less distance. So I really should have clocked what was going on at this point. You know, more friction in the system more weight in the system. Things at this point are just getting uh, higher impact really. This is a cool little trick Joel's doing here, look. Get up there, boy. There's quite a bit of a distance there. If you actually measured from the pulley to where that half hitch is, I bet there's a good, you know, nearly a metre at least. Um, so when that drops, by the time it catches, that's that's two metres before it's even caught on the pulley. Uh, that's quite a bit of a waste because you're putting wide, big, wide open gobs in. It's just increasing the distance between the half hitch and the pulley which just increases the, the, the drop. A lot of the time these days, I'll just try and do step cuts where I can with a little nick so I can direct it in the right direction. Here it is, boom, snap. Right, we've been incredibly lucky there. Um, it's not hit the cables and it's, it's, it's not hit the truck. It's gone straight in the middle of it. And uh, that could have been completely preventable. Um, 
just by setting the rigging up, doing it a bit smaller, moving that truck out of the out of the way. I have actually done that before on another job in Canada, and it it, it was so heavy that it snapped the the the, the dead eye itself. Where the, where the splice is, it snapped that off and it took the whole rigging system down with it. Went bouldering down this hill and caused a lot of damage. So completely avoidable there. I'll talk about that in a minute. Here's another mistake. Uh, we switched up then from the rigging. Obviously, we had a close call. We'll try something else. You know, I was struggling to get over here the other side of that, that power cable, because the, 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 the boom arm came down and over. Uh, I've obviously not cut through quite as far here. It's caught, and then that's it, boom. Lucky he stopped there, and then I could just get in there to push it back, but that was another close call. So two close calls basically straight after, just trying to rush and trying to get done quick. The problem is when you're like 20, 25 year old climber or so, like I was here, um, you're in a competitive environment. There was like 20 odd lads that was uh, working at the place I was working at and you all want to be that top spot. So how do you get to the top spot? You, you go quick, you get smash the jobs out, you get it done fast. But that culture in itself is a problem because it invites the uh, possibility of, of making mistakes like this. You know, you want to go back to the, the yard and be like, yeah, we, we got that done, good time type thing, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is you, you're getting it done properly without damage and without hurting anyone. That's really the most important thing. It's just difficult to tell a 25 year old lad that, that just thinks they want to you know, it's the ego getting involved, I think, more than anything. Luckily, I've managed to secure that back on the top. You know, what you can do in this situation if you're using a grab like that is just cut some little notches into the, the, the wood. For some reason, I must have stopped the camera, but we got it off. We got it off all right, that one. Yeah, that's something I've probably learned a bit more these uh, in recent years. It's like if you're doing a crane pick or something like that, just to come all the way through, you know, 90% or so, or 95%, and then instead of coming in flat with that back, or coming at a slight angle, like it, you know, come come down like you're putting a notch, notch cut in the top. It's normally a better way than trying to do a step. Yeah, they're getting heavier now. The, these trees are bigger than they look at in the, on the west coast and um, they're just real tall and chunky at the base. Easy to do that I find, you know, it's just straightforward tree work. There's no excuses on a job like this to, to get anything wrong really, it's, it's, it's other than the fact you're just trying to rush it, literally. For whatever reason. In hindsight, I mean, this this is working okay, obviously with the grabs, but um, if, if, the, if the rigging was getting a bit tricky, at some point, in hindsight, what would be better to do is just cut them in rings that you can push off, like, you know, I've got plenty of drop zone down there. That's not really an issue. It's not that enjoyable for a climber or a new bucket um, because you know, it's dusty and you just got to do a lot more cutting than what you would have. Doesn't look quite look as good on a GoPro, but 
it gets the job done sometimes just as quick, just to, just to ring it up. So yeah, that's I think basically it. Thanks for watching if you've watched this far. Me critiquing my 25, 26 year old self. I've obviously learned a lot in those in the last five or six years. And uh, I just my only advice to, to someone maybe that age who's, who thinks they're pretty shit at climbing now and stuff like that is just, uh, just keep learning because there's still a lot more to learn. And um, whatever you think you know now, trust me, when you get a bit older, you'll realise how much you actually didn't know. So please give us a subscribe if you like the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you would have done anything differently, let me know what you would have done differently. And also, if you've had any mistakes or near misses in the past, let me know. Thanks for watching. Give us a subscribe.